Certifications. I, I really do not like certifications. I think very often they are so pricey and not even that great at proving a skill. And I mean, these days they're mostly just used to get a job interview. But in the last three months, I finally caved and I got my first two cybersecurity certifications, which are Hack the Boxes CPTS and Offensive Securities OSCP. And in this video, I'm going to compare the both from my perspective. And this is just going to be me rambling on. I don't have anything to show. It's just going to be me talking about how I feel about these exams. But before I do that, I just want to state that certifications are just one of the many ways to prove your skills in ethical hacking in being a penetration tester. There are so many other ways to prove your skills that are free. You can, for example, become really good at CTFs and play them every weekend. You can become a bug bounty hunter. You can get a couple of CVEs. You can write write-ups. You can teach other people. You can make videos or write hacking tools and all of these ways are free and can allow you to get a job interview or get um, those first steps into uh, the cybersecurity world. So don't feel like a certification is the only way of getting into the field. It is just a very proven way of getting into the field and it, well, it's proven that it works. So right now, uh, let's compare these two certifications. So CPTS and OSCP, I'm going to be talking about the content of the course. I'm going to be talking about the difficulty of the exam, the format of the exam, the price, the recognition that they have, and then the community and support around both certifications. So to start with the course content, um, both the certifications cover the same kind of areas. They cover network security, a bit of web app pen testing, privilege escalation, and Active Directory. And I think they're very focused around a network penetration tester or uh, maybe the beginnings of a red teamer, stuff like that. Now, overall, I think the CPTS course is much, much better than the OSCP course. It is much more structured. It is very complete. It has a lot of content, like so much content. There's so much to cover in that course. And I also think it has better labs and also more challenging labs. But one thing that the CPTS course does not have is videos. And the OSCP one does. However, I really did not like the videos that OS, that OSCP had. The, the videos were all spoken by, I think, a voice actor. Um, and it all sounded like a robot reading a script very, very slowly. I had to watch these videos on 1.5 or sometimes even two times the speed just because they were spoken so, so slowly. And I didn't see the videos really as a benefit. Now, in terms of the actual content, so you have the written text and the labs, um, I think both certifications are fairly equal in terms of their network security content. So they're both quite equal in that. In terms of web application content, I think both are lacking in what they teach. Like they only cover the very basics of uh, web application pen testing. Uh, but I think that's also because both of these certs are geared more towards network pen testing and red teaming. So maybe that makes sense there. But I don't think somebody who takes OSCP or CPTS is going to be a good web application pen tester out of the box. But then we come to the privilege escalation and, act and active directory modules of both of these certs. And I think OSCP was really, really slacking behind here. What they cover about Active Directory is really just the basics. Like you can barely even call that Active Directory. It. I was quite surprised about how little it was because on Twitter I often saw people complaining that the new OSCP exam uh, had a bunch of Active Directory and that it was going to be really hard. In truth, it was not hard at all, and there was very little Active Directory content. Whereas the CPTS exam goes really, really deeply into these topics. Like you, after the CP, after taking and succeeding with the CPTS certification, I'm fairly certain that you can do an Active Directory pen test without any issues. Like I learned, I have been doing these pen tests for a while and I learned a lot of new things from CPTS. Whereas after OSCP, I don't think that somebody who just does OSCP is able to properly perform uh, an Active Directory pen test. I 
don't think that's possible. It's just so limited, so little is covered. I, in, in terms of Active Directory, they only really cover Kerberos and then um, Kerber Roasting and Strap Roasting, and that's really it. There, There's not much more there. Whereas uh, with oh, uh, CPTS, you go much deeper and cover much more. But of course, covering much more and then doing much more also comes with a downside, and that is then, in this case, the difficulty. The CPTS exam is much, much, much more difficult. I mean, the fact that only 150 people have succeeded the exam, that shows how difficult it is. For me, the CPTS exam was at the edge of my abilities, and I had to put in the work to pass that exam. It took me eight full days of hacking to pass the exam. The OSCP exam, on the other, other hand, was really, really basic. I had no issues with that. I solved all six machines in 12 hours. Um, to me, each OSCP exam machine is comparable to a modern-day easy machine on the Hack the Box platform. Um, so if you, can, if you can pawn an easy machine on the Hack the Box platform without requiring any hints, then I think you're pretty much set to just take the OSCP exam uh, and go for it. Now, I'm also going to cover the exam formats here. So they are quite different. The CPTS exam is 10 days. And in those 10 days, you have to um, solve one set of 14 machines. So you have 14 machines that you need to hack into, and they're all tied together uh, logically. So you start with machine one, then you move on to machine two, and so forth. Uh, and in order to pass, you need to hack into or pwn 12 of the 14 machines. OSCP is different. There you have six machines. Three of them are in a set of active, active directories. So you have two machines and then one domain controller. And then three machines are also standalone. And for the OSCP exam, you have 24 full hours. I think with the CPTS exam, there is much more of a time constraint, even though you have 10 days. Just because within those 10 days, you obviously also have to eat, sleep, uh, and all that stuff. And then you need to hack, and there's 14 machines, and the difficulty level is much higher. Um, so I really needed 8 of the 10 days for that exam. Whereas with OSCP, I finished it in 12 hours, so that's half of the time. But... Uh, Obviously, these things vary greatly between people. Uh, for OCP as well, I didn't take any breaks. I just kept on going. Uh, whereas with CPTS, I obviously slept uh, in those eight days. So it will depend on who you are and how your mind works and how your brain works, how many hours it can keep going. Um, but I think you shouldn't fear the OSCP exam for being only 24 hours because the boxes are also easier. Now, the OSCP exam is also proctored whereas the CPTS exam is not. So that means that for the OSCP exam, when you start, you have to share your screen. Uh, you have to share the services that are running on your computer so they can check that you're not uh, videoing all your screens to somebody else that can help you. You have to have a camera, uh, a webcam constantly looking at you with, with a, an actual person sitting there looking at you. And if you want to take a break, if you want to go to the toilet, whatnot, you have to type in a chat box, say, hey, I'm going to go take a little break now. And they will tell you, hey, it's okay. And then you can go take a break. Um, so it's a lot of rules there. You really have to follow the rules very strictly. Also, in terms of the exam, uh, there are certain tools that are not allowed to be executed. There are certain tools that are. Uh, CPTS is not like that. In CPTS, there's no proctoring whatsoever. You just have 10 days and you do your stuff in those 10 days. Um, there's nobody checking something. There's no tools that you cannot use. You can just use anything that you want uh, as long as you hack into those machines. And I actually like the CPTS approach much more here because it, in, that, in that way where you're allowed to do anything, um, it's not like that's much of a help. The exam is built very well in a way where it doesn't matter that you're allowed to use Metasploit. It's not going to help you greatly. And I think effective exam design can make it so that requiring certain tools not to be used becomes silly because it just doesn't matter. So I, I really wish that OSCP would just make better exams and remove, like if you make an exam where, where Metasploit is not going to help you in any way, and that's great. Of course, I just said that the CPTS exam is very, very difficult. Um, but in terms of the exam, there's also, so you have 10 days for the exam. And I think at Hack the Box, they kind of understand that this exam is quite difficult. So they will 
help you a little bit, right? So after if after those 10 days, you don't manage to solve enough machines, they still ask you to send in a report of your machines or of what you did so far. They will read through it and then they will give you a couple of hints on what you may have missed. And that is because after those 10 days, you fail, then you have a second attempt all, always lined up. So within, I think, within a certain number of days or within three weeks, you're uh, allowed to have another go at the exam. So you get another 10 days where you can continue with that little help from Hack the Box. I think also because they understand that you may get stuck on one point, but that doesn't mean that you should fail the entire exam. So that's kind of nice to have there. Um, although that's mainly because the exam is just so difficult, I guess, that they need to introduce that. Um, and the exams, for both of the exams, you have to write a report. Um, to be honest, I did not spend a lot of time on writing these reports. I just wrote the basics, got a lot of screenshots and just put them in a Word document. In the, They both provide you a template that you can use and just put everything in there and quickly wrote what it does, but I didn't go into full depth. And I mean, for both of them, they were happy with it. I didn't get uh, any negative feedback. Um, so I think that's fine. With your report, um, I always write my report whilst doing the exam because at that point I can still take lots of screenshots. I can still double check things. Um, but I know there's a lot of people that write their reports after they've solved everything. It's just up to you. Uh, it also depends on how much time you think you're going to need, I guess. But with the reports, my report for OCP was about 52 pages. My report for Hack the Box, the CPTS exam, was about 100 pages. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of, of how those reports looked and how long they were. So they were quite lengthy, but obviously had a lot of screenshots. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the pricing. So the pricing is very, very different between the two. For OSCP, I spent about 1,200 euros for 90 days of lab access with the exam. Um, Obviously, I did not pay for that myself. I used training budget from the penetration testing company that I work for um, because I would never, ever spend thousands on a piece of paper that says I'm a good hacker when I can prove for free that I'm a good hacker. I don't need to pay thousands for that. Um, so I I would actually advise nobody to go and pay out of pocket for OSCP. I would find a company to sponsor it because that is quite a lot of money for an individual, in my opinion. And it's too much money, definitely for only 90 days of lab access. And I think as a beginner, you would need more than 90 days of lab access to actually get the most out of this exam. If we compare that to Hack the Box or to CPTS, uh, I believe the CPTS exam costs 410 euros for a full year of access to the course with an exam attempt. So that's about three times cheaper than the OSCP exam for a full year of access. Um, and since the course is so much more complete, I actually like this deal a lot. And I think this is actually affordable for individuals. So yeah, that's definitely something to think about. The price difference is there, but of course, um, there's a reason that Hack the Box may be a lot cheaper. I, and I think it comes down to recognition um, because in the industry, everybody knows OSCP. It's the first thing that recruiters ask, do you have your OSCP certification? So I think they are can ask more just because every pen tester kind of needs OSCP to get their first job or most, most do. Uh, whereas sadly, nobody in HR really knows CPTS, right? So it's... It's a bit of a bummer because in my opinion, if I had to choose between two pen testers, one having CPTS and one having OSCP, I would definitely go for the one that has CPTS. But sadly, in HR, that, that's not known yet. There's only 150 people that have it so far. Um, although these days, some technical people may actually know the certificate and may know the value that it can hold. So in, in my opinion, the CPTS uh, certificate shows proves more that you're a better hacker, whereas the OSCP one is really just to get your foot in the door with HR. All of these certificates also have a big community and support part. And I mean, at some point, you're going to get stuck whilst doing the course. You're going to need help. And at that point, having a community or a support is amazing. Uh, the Hack the Box community is great. It's where I made some lifelong friends. 
However, what I lack there is that there is no dedicated support staff that are always there to help. So everything is powered from within the community. It's all community members helping each other out. And OSCP has actual support staff or people that do support and, and they will always reply within half an hour, I believe. Or, or um, And that is great. So in terms of there, I think the Hack the Box community is amazing, but the, the OSCP support is also quite good. So you'll, you'll get a lot from that. That being said, one thing that I hate about offensive security is their, their mantra, uh, the words, try harder. I have had several cases where a lab that I was doing was just not working. And I told the people what I was doing. Um, and I just got the reply, try harder. And the next day I spin up a new machine and the exact commands that I tried the day before worked. And it turns out that the lab supplied by offensive security was actually just broken. So there was nothing for me to try harder. It just wasn't working. And that kind of, I don't like the idea of that. I think hacking is a lot about the struggle. And I think that struggle creates passion and you cannot teach passion. So I totally understand why you want people to try harder because Hacking is all about trying harder, trying things that should not be possible. And I think you need very much passionate people to form a good penetration testing team. However, I did find passion hard to find in the OSCP Discord uh, or in their community. I think their community was very much focused on this end goal, the certificate, and the people in there were really just focused on that and were not really focused on becoming the best hackers they could. Um, so I I found that passion difficult to find, whereas with CPTS, I think the learning journey is better. The end result may be uh, a little less because the cert has less value right now, but the learning journey was much more better and the people that I had conversations with, they were all quite passionate and they if something went wrong and something wasn't working in the way that was expected, they were actually interested in going deeper and finding out why things weren't working. Whereas with OSCP, I saw a lot of people that just wanted to get the exercises done because they wanted to get bonus points on the exam. They just wanted to finish it. They didn't want to look deeper into things. And that is, again, just my perspective from the people that I uh, conversed with within both communities. So that may be totally off base, but um, it's just how, how I felt about these things. And I think that leaves me uh, to a conclusion um, for this video. So to conclude, I think that if you want to become a better hacker, then you have to take the CPTS course. Not necessarily, not necessarily the exam, but the course will make you a much better hacker. So if you want to focus on becoming the best version of yourself, the best hacker you can be, I think that CPTS is a great place to start and it will really challenge you to become a great hacker. But if you want to get a job, then do the OSCP exam because the OSCP exam is going to be your way into getting a job. Um, so for me, the best part and the best way to combine this is to first start by doing the CPTS course and becoming a good hacker and then go for this OSCP exam to get your foot in the door with companies. And I think that that is kind of the best combination out of these two, because of course, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. You, you could definitely just take the CPTS course, get what you need out of that, and then go for the OSCP exam. And I think that if you finish the CPTS course, new, then you will have no issues with the OSCP exam. There was very little new in the OSCP course that wasn't actually covered in the CPTS course. So um, with that, I'd like to conclude this video. Uh, again, this was just me rambling on about the things that I think this was in no way a complete um, comparison. This was in no way the only truth. There are multiple truths. There are people who think differently about this. This is just what I think. And I wanted to share that with you guys because I noticed that a lot of people were asking about my opinion on this matter. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back with a new video whenever that may come because I have not been uploading uh, videos very um, a lot lately. So well, anyways, uh, I hope you pass your exam that you have got upcoming. Uh, and if you uh, decided that you don't want to do an exam, I hope that you uh, get so good at, uh, at Bug Bounty, at CTFs, that you can get that job that you're aspiring and uh, I'll meet you somewhere at a conference sometime. So see you there and take care.